We have soap opera royalty right here. Deidre Hall and Steve <laughs> Byrne, who star in Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem. Season two is now streaming on Peacock. Thank you so much for joining me today. Rudy, thank you. So nice to be with you and love your Chicago folks. <laughs> yeah, oh, we, thanks, we, Rudy. We love when you come to visit here, especially you have a lot of friends here, don't you, Deidre? I do, I do, I do. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Days of Our Lives. Show's been on since 1965, over 14,000 episodes. Now this new series is giving people a look outside of Salem. I mean, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to see in this uh, second season. Our, our writer, Ron Carlovati, um, loves doing this because he gets to write a show that's sort of playing sort of with all the people that he knows so well. And because we're on cable, he can just go crazy. So expect a little crazy. It, it, a little, little craziness for sure. <laughs> and speaking of crazy, uh, Steve, let's talk a little bit about uh, coming back to portray Harris. Uh, you played him in 1988. Yes, yes. You're coming back to the series. Talk a little bit about that. And also, you know, fans were excited about Bo and Hope to come back, but Harris might have uh, some plans in, in there too as well too. Listen, I know uh, uh, the return of Harris is way bigger than Bo and Hope, so let's just calm down, okay? Everybody's no, saying that. Everybody <laughs> says so. <laughs> said, said, said no one ever. No one ever. But, um, you know, it, you know, it's exciting, exciting because I had I did start my daytime career on Days of Our Lives in 1988, and now, like uh, Deidre said, said oh, has carte blanche to do anything, and the gap between me being there and 30 years later, Harris is up to some uh, some trouble for sure. And we'll see what happens. And it is action packed. This this thing was so fun to do. Uh, I got to connect with some some friends and cast and crew that I already worked with, and it's just been a it, it was so fun to do. Deidre, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Dr. Melina Evans as far as the possession storyline in the mid '90s. That just changed the whole daytime so soap opera game, and that became such a huge phenomenon, especially getting you know newer viewers into the series. That storyline kind of came back in a newer version in this new series. But talk a little bit about when you first did it. Did you realize, like, this is going to be really different and this is something that is going to, you know, change uh, daytime TV? Wow, possession in the first five minutes. Um, <laughs> you know what? I um, There was a lot of uh, thought that went into it. And and Jim Riley, who are, was our head writer then, was, was a devout Catholic and, and so wise about the audience. He just said... They can do it. They're ready for it. So, so we uh, uh, we rolled ourselves into it, and and we're a little stunned how well it did. You know, we attracted, as you've said, Rudy, uh, an enormous teen audience um, that is with us to this day. So we're now, you know, ninety years old. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, and it, the revisit was was fun because everybody got to be possessed, and everybody had their own interpretation of what it was to be possessed. I mean, this. I mean, we're going back to the time before social media. So you couldn't just say here, I'm watching it. I mean, there were people who were unavailable. I know, my, you know, my sisters, you know, my cousins, everybody was like, here's what we're watching. And then everybody else who maybe wasn't watching it ended up getting stuck by the TV. So it was just like one of those things that like, it was just, you know, culturally caught on before the time of, of social media, as far as like word of mouth. Rudy, you're right. Pre-social media. I'm trying to think back that far. Um, but you're right. It had to be word of mouth and, and neighborhood to neighborhood. So uh, happily, it caught on very, on very quickly. <laughs> uh, let's talk, uh, I do want to ask as far as like, I don't know if it's ever been defined because we have a Salem in Illinois. But we've seen on a map that it was Salem, Minnesota. Uh, has it ever been defined as to where Salem actually is in the Midwest? Gosh, I don't know, Steve, do you know? I have no idea, Deidre. This is your this is your show right now. Yeah, we have an airport and we have seasons, so that much we know about it. Um, but nobody has an accent um, except for the English girl. We don't know. We don't know. We just yeah. it, it appeals to all of America. It appeals to all of America, and it's at, somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, Deidre, I do want to talk a little bit about your your super fans because I want to talk a little bit about that experience, especially with being on days of our lives for over 40 years, that you have generations of families and generations of super fans. Uh, talk a little bit about what it's like to maybe go to the grocery store or go to the airport or go out to a restaurant when you encounter somebody who has been a lifelong fan or remembers watching the show with a parent or watches the show, you know, with their family. You know, m mostly um, we do have super fans, of course. I think days of our lives is unique there. Um, but mostly, mostly they've seen us. We've been out there for 45 years, as you've said. And we also every year are in the habit of doing some sort of fan event. So people that need to get in front of us do seem to get in front of us. And when people see me in public, they think they're seeing Marlena. So I get to hear people's problems. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> see, as far as coming back to the character uh, of Harris, where you're like, I, I'm in, I've been wanting to put, you know, come back to this character and talk a little bit about that well, journey when you told everybody I'm coming back to Days of Our Lives. Yeah, so I, I actually met with Albert. Albert was the executive producer, and he kind of told me about this. Um, um, and they were thinking about doing Beyond Salem 2, that Beyond Salem was a huge hit and they're ready to do the second chapter. And I'm like, what is it? He said, it's a short run series. It's going to be five episodes. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like five episodes, let's do that, right? Because I wasn't sure if I wanted to be, go back to work or, or a commitment for a long term. Um, and he said, are you okay playing a bad guy? I said, uh, sure. I said, just let me know when to show up. And he was like, okay. okay. And it was really that easy. And I was so excited because you know, everything's going to be streaming at some point, right? So NBC and, and, and Peacock got it right. Fan, you, got, you guys were just talking about, we have generations of fans who are hungry for content. And now they have Beyond Salem, Beyond Salem 2. It's on Peacock. I think we're the fourth episode, fourth episode airing today. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And I just had a great time. And the, and the funny thing is, uh, you know, we never shoot in order. Like everything's out of order <laughs> most of the time. And and I was hoping since this was, you know, uh, kind of a special streaming or a limited series that we were going to shoot in order. Well, we did. Well, we did. That's TV and that's film. So um, you're kind of just kind of for me, I was just trying to figure out who Harris was this whole time. So, so I'm interested in watching it just to see if I pulled anything off. And you all you get to figure it along alongside the audience who's watching it for the for the very first time as well, too. Yes. 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 And it's been fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> And, and what else can you, uh, you know, maybe DJ, if you want to chime in here as far as, you know, what we're going to see in this uh, today's episode and then the final episode that's going to be dropping on uh, on Friday. You know, I think what will be the most important thing for the fans is all the people that they get, they get again. Um, yes. uh, you, you've got, you've got your, obviously your, your stables are, are, are Greg and, and uh, Stephen Nichols, Mary Beth, uh, Kamala Banos, Rob Wilson, and, and so many more. So it's your regular, your, your regular, that we're used to having a different, a different measure. And then as far let's talk one more thing about uh, about Bo and Hope that you know that was recently announced in the uh, in the early spring and fans went crazy with with the return of, of those two characters you know what was it like knowing that you both were going to be a part of, of season two with the highly anticipation of, of these two characters returning? Uh, Steve, I don't know. I I um I only had time to talk to Peter. We're, you know, we're so divided <laughs> on the set anymore. Um, so yeah. it was great to see him in the hall when he catch a quick moment. But um, it's across a crowded room for us because of COVID. So we're not we're not able to play with each other. That came out yeah. wrong. Anyway, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, for for me, you know, when I was on days. It was, you know, it was Patch and Kayla. It was D. Well, I don't, Marlena and 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 uh, John Black. And is that correct? Am I am I right there or no? Yes, I am. Great. So for me, you know, look, super couples for soaps is that's what soaps are built on. So to get Bo and Hope back together is awesome, and it's on Beyond Salem. So I'm excited, and we get to see your your storyline along with that too. Uh, Deidre and Steve, thank you so much for your time today. Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem Thanks, season two. Now streaming on Peacock. Thanks, Thanks, Rudy. Thank you so much.